ladies, gentlemen, and whoever or whatever you identify as, welcome to the Shed of Dread. Welcome to another video. Been a while catching up on a lot of the Doctor Who stuff that has been going on and the things I missed before I went away. So let's crack on, shall we? Right then. Going to be red from the old Metro, near the old goggles because I won't be able to see. Right then. Utterly vile debate on the appropriateness of Doctor Who same sex storyline sparks Ofcom complaints. Right, well, I mean, it starts off wrong because there is no same sex storyline. It's just a load of made up bullshit to suit certain people who clearly don't watch the show. In any case, Talk Radio has been hit with Ofcom complaints after a presenter debated whether Doctor Who. Having same-sex relationship storyline, already covered, isn't one, is appropriate for children. Now, this is something that always amazes me, and it always just shows the hypocritical nature of the idiots over there, on the left. Whenever you start talking about Doctor Who, I mean, I mean, you have to understand it's a children's show, you're just getting all head up over a children's show. It's made for children, not people of your age. Until... Somebody goes, it's a children's show. Oh, no, no, it's not. It's an adult show. It's allowed to do whatever it wants. Hypocrisy. Isn't it wonderful? Any case, I actually listened to this radio interview. Hence why I'm doing this, because I didn't get a chance before. But this is important. Broadcaster Kevin O'Sullivan asked journalist Nigel Pawley what age kids should be exposed to adult issues, which it is an adult issue, even though they teach it in our schools from very young nowadays because it's all about acceptance but in fact it isn't it's kind of telling you that you shouldn't do and believe in what you've been told by everybody else but we'll carry on as he discussed the blossoming romance there isn't one there wasn't one it was just created for the last two just to make a few people happy who never watched remember 2.2 overnights between the Time Lord, played by Jodie Whittaker, not for long, I just, yeah, and her companion, Yaz, the plank, Mandip Gill, the worst actor known to man, and thankfully, Adric is no longer the worst companion ever. Yes, Mandip Gill, as Yaz, congratulations, because no one will be as bad as you. In any case, I'll carry on. Devoted Doctor Who fans who were recently over the moon to see the relationship. No, 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 no. not devoted Doctor Who fans. The the section of the fans that they wanted to appease, to address, even though it completely then sacrificed everybody else who had anything liking to do with Doctor Who and just basically alienated everybody. Remember that this show started with 18.18 .18 million, wasn't it? 18 million with the uh, woman who fell to earth and it now finishes and it's got one left at 2.2 million that's a 16 million loss of viewers but of course as long as it's with going to the tiny little minority who sit in the corner who bang on the bench shit on twitter old chap and tell us we need a lesbian relationship no we don't and you've gone down that way and it backfired like everything else any case, between the 13th address, addressed, no it wasn't, in the Eve of the Daleks, no it wasn't, and more flirty scenes unveiled in the Easter special, Legend of the Sea Devils. Well, I've covered that, you know how I feel about that, and no it wasn't, it's just created, and no offence, you know that bit where Yaz looks at the Doctor, didn't the Doctor look like, in any case, to the point, addressing the bubbling same-sex romance, it wasn't Bubbling, it was created for the last three shows. Up until then, Mandy Guild wasn't interested in the slightest with the Doctor, because if you bothered to watch what was vaguely a storyline, she liked Ryan. Any case, let's carry it on. Kevin on his talk show last week, don't forget Doctor Who is meant to be a children's show, the classic line. It's a kid's sci-fi drama, and you have to ask your question, at what age is it appropriate to start assailing kids with adult issues? Right, it's not a kid's show. It's a family show. A show where mum and dad and the kids can sit and watch something together at the same time and enjoy it, usually for completely different reasons. 
So let's get away with the It's a Kid Show. It's an adult show. It's a family entertainment show. That's what it is. It's for everyone. Well, <clears throat> sorry, used to be for everyone. Now it's for a tiny niche market that aren't watching. Are they? 2.2. I think it was 3.4 on the seven days. No one's interested. It used to be a show for everyone. Now it's for a niche market. And that niche market is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. As you finally realise that the people who bang on it about Twitter don't watch your show. <sighs> Lesbianism, bisexuality, homosexuality, heterosex. At what age is this appropriate? So if you've got an eight-year-old kid watching Doctor Who, is this appropriate? And um, Well... Let's be honest, by the time they've hit eight, they've already been indoctrinated at the schools by that. So, you know, my six-year-old learnt about penises and vaginas. Yeah, next year she'll be learning about it. And they've got books in the library. So, is it appropriate? No. But they already get taught this shit at such an... We've stopped letting our kids be kids, haven't we? We've, we have to just, like, bombard them with our opinions... We just don't let them be kids. So by the age of eight, the kids probably already know most of it. And remember, that's not just schools. I mean, we've got YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all these things. I know you're supposed to be over 13 to use them, but they're not, are they? Let's be honest. Because you just have to put the age date in and that's it. It's done, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So it's a load of crap. So we live in a world where we've, our children are being ass assaulted with this information. Now, you're going to probably go, oh, you're against... No. Homosexuality, gays, lesbians, whatever. If you're happy and it makes you happy, I'm happy for you. I genuinely am because everybody in this world deserves the right to be happy. It's that simple. But... When you decide that being happy isn't enough, and therefore you must make everybody else take part in your reality, then there's a problem. Then there's a problem. We should all be able to coexist, no problem at all. But of course, we're not allowed to do that, are we? Because we have to have programs like this, shoving shit down our throat that we don't really care about. Yeah? I don't... If you uh, like, like the vast majority of, of people, not the idiots... On either end of the spectrum, you know, the arseholes, doesn't matter which way they lie. Left wing, right wing, they're both wings of the same stupid bird. Yeah, those of us in the middle couldn't give a shit whether you're gay, lesbian, whatever, trans, whatever. Don't care, not interested. But when you start making, enforcing people to have to follow that opinion, then that's where there's a problem. Okay? Just to get that out there. Don't judge you on your sex, age, race, religion, whatever. I just do you whether you're being a twat or not. It's that easy. Journalist Nigel then responded, we, well, we would probably think it isn't, but people who have an agenda probably think no age is too young. That is correct. That is correct. He's not done anything wrong with that at all, because that is correct. Just look at the way the schooling systems are. Just to look at the libs of TikTok exposing all these uh, teachers teaching kids their sexual gender and preferences, because that's important to them. To no age is too young. I think I think you could write a Doctor Who episode or a series and make it very entertaining for kids, very scary, without having to make some political points. Correct. Now, before you start again, before you start again, Doctor Who has always made political points. Yes, I know it has. But not to the level of this one, which is literally, this is how they use political points now. Have that. You are evil. Other Doctor Who's used to do it in a nice, subtle, gentle way. A way that you would actually have an impact. You know, how people would react in reality to situations. Not down your throat. It's the tedium of TV shows, Kevin, of having to have a political point, having to hammer home the message, having to have some good message come across rather than just entertain us. Exactly. Naturally, many listeners, doubtful, were upset over the debate, one branding the discussion utterly vile. Right then, to the person, the the one singular person who said it was utterly vile, 
please explain how that was utterly vile. And then the next thing is, why should we give a shit about what one person thought was utterly vile? Because the things I find utterly vile, I'm not allowed to say because it's a hate crime. Does the man not watch TV because lots of ads are sexual, whether it be perfume or clothes ads? No, they usually mix race families because that's the thing. Now, what's the difference between a straight couple kissing and LGBT kissing? There isn't, except when you make a fucking issue out of it. Then there is. The kids are already exposed to sex in some form, so why not normalise LGBT couples? Okay, that's fine. But it's not being done to normalise it, it's being done to push an agenda. And that's the difference that you clearly, another rage, this is utterly vile. When I saw Same Sex Kiss on Doctor Who as a kid in 2005, it was a transformative moment for me. There's nothing political about representing love. A, correct, there isn't. B, you made a fucking issue out of it though, and that's when it becomes political. You haven't said it, it? Yes, I'm, I'm sure it was a wonderful transformative moment for you. Yeah? No one else gave a fuck. We just went, oh, okay. And that was it. But you, because... Yes, there is nothing political about representing love until you start using it to push that ag your agenda and you've been butthurt over it and it's not fair. No one gives a fuck about your feelings. They're just feelings. No one gives a shit. So... What about the kids who have two mums or two dasks as a third parent? As my kids or their classmates too young to see same-sex parents in the playground to hear, no, I don't have a dad, my mums are married. If you could, could shouldn't see a gay boy couples in the media, but what are, no, they're everywhere now. Absolutely everywhere, in every advert, everywhere. And no one really gives a shit. Except it's just become over the top now, just like everything else. It's right to represent everything in the world. But when the representation becomes to, it has to be put in there, otherwise you're evil, that's when you make it a political issue. Because that's what's happening. Yeah, you watch adverts down, and you can see all the boxes being ticked as the advert comes on. Because if it isn't, and you don't include that, you're evil, you're a Nazi, you're a far-right scumbag, you're sexist, you're homophobic, you're transphobic. And we carry on the soupy circle. Yes, they may have two mums and two dads. But I bet they don't make any fucking issue of it. Only twats like you seem to want to make an issue of it because there isn't an issue. Because everybody else in that playground couldn't give a shit. I bet you if you went out and asked them, oh, you know, those, those, those two women are married. Everybody go, yeah, and no one gives a fuck. Go away. Yeah, but don't you think, no, we don't give a fuck. Go away. Because just get people get on with their lives. Ready for this? Television off watchdog Ofcom has confirmed out of a population of 68 million, 54 people made a complaint. 54 stupid, butthurt, idiotic twats made complaints about something they found vile. No one gives a fuck. How many people watch that show? Take away the 54. So you're going to be 0.0000001%. And I bet you out of the 54 complaint listeners, I bet there was only 10 listeners. And then the other 44 are the twats on Twitter who jump on the bandwagon because they use it to make their political agenda. Because that's the world we live in now. Yaz and Doctor's Romance have been with away for some time now. No, it hasn't. We fans treated the pair having a moment. No, they didn't. In a recently special. No, they didn't. No, they didn't at all. It was just fans. It was, well, not only that, it was pandering. As the Doctor and Yaz wandered to the bottom of the ocean, in the TARDIS, the do Doctor joked, not a bad date, am I? This line sent, friend, sent viewers, no, the few remaining idiots that were watching it, into a frenzy. No, it didn't. As did the facial expressions of longing from both characters. No, there wasn't. One looked blank and the other one looked like a goof. There was nothing there. It was only there if you made it there. There was nothing there. Sorry, but that's just bullshit. 
In January, Doctor Who was praised by LGBT charity Stonewall. Well, if Stonewall have approved it, you know it's agenda-driven. That's why everybody's in big companies now are turning their back on Stonewall because they're fucking lunatics. After the New Year special confirmed the two female characters have feelings for each other. No, it actually didn't. One said they got feelings for him. The other one didn't reciprocate. So it proves that whoever wrote, you know, you read, 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 you didn't watch it. Stonewall didn't even watch it because Yaz said she got feelings for the Doctor and the Doctor said nothing. Bollocks then. So it wasn't saying they got feelings for each other. Utter shit. But of course, this is more important than somebody saying, I, I, I'm really worried about my cancer coming back and, and uh, well, I'm socially awkward. I'm just going to go over here and push some buttons because uh, it's a white straight male, so no one gives a fuck about him. But this, oh, yeah, it's great, isn't it? Now you see what the show's failing. It was fantastic to see a prominent storyline on the attraction. No, there wasn't between two women in the latest episode of Doctor Who. Robert DeSantis, Director of Communication and External Affairs at Stonewall, told the Metro. Stonewall are a bunch of raging lunatics. There's long been an LGBTQ plus themes in the show. Yes, there has. So this isn't new, is it? I mean, Captain Jack kissed somebody uh, in the Titanic story, was it? In the Christmas special? You know, and it's happened before. And the story between Yasmin Khan and the Doctor is one of the most significant examples so far. Except it fucking isn't. Because there's nothing there. At all. You just think there is. We can't wait. We can't be what we can't see. And same-sex same attraction represented one of the most popular TV shows with delight viewers and means so much to the LGBTQ plus people. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't because if anyone with an ounce of logic could just see that and go, there's nothing really there. There was no emotion. There was no love. There was nothing. This doctor has no compassion or love for anything. She sacrifices people left, right and centre. But of course, you'd know that if you watch the show. But clearly you don't. Clearly what you see is, although they've done that, therefore it's a great thing. Did you watch it? Well, yeah, because they did it on the New Year's Eve special where they said they loved each other when they fucking didn't. So there you go. Talk radio, talk sense. And ask logical questions and just having a normal standard debate about these things nothing offensive nothing vile nothing derogatory nothing insensitive nothing whatsoever just two people having a chat but 54 people thought that it was offensive it hurt my feelings it doesn't mean shit you don't give a fuck if your feelings are hurt they don't give you any special superpowers if you're offended it doesn't mean you're special but it also shows you that the people who comment on these things never watch the show because if they did, they wouldn't put that shit now, would they? But any case, ladies and gentlemen, that's my opinions. What do I know? I'm a fat bloke sitting in his shed surrounded by his toys. But I am going to bring that one to a close. I hope you enjoyed it, because if you did, please thumb it up and share. If you didn't, thanks for the watch. Much appreciated either way. If you want to watch some more things that are coming up, Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, political stuff, everything I do on my channel, you should already know by now. And if you don't, check out the other videos back. You'll get a general idea of where I'm coming from then hit the subscribe button if that's what you like to listen to. And with that, and as always, until the next one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thanks for watching.